I don't know how this happened, but I got a big beard now. So we're gonna do kind of a part two on the impressions of Transformers Generations Legacy. Now, I know you can only do one first impression, but I wanted to follow up with that. I think a lot of people are kind of curious how I felt after getting some Wave 1 figures. I don't have the entirety of it. I'm still missing out on kickback, but everything else I do have for the main release. So originally I said in my first video that my impressions on Legacy was a little bit lackluster. It just wasn't really that exciting, but I don't necessarily blame any specific figure or the entire line. This was kind of the first series that didn't really branch out on any exciting themes or gimmicks. It was just, let's do generations with different themes. Let's not do like, oh, Combiner Wars or Titans and, and stuff like that. No, just whatever we want. Which is a cool idea, but I felt like when it came through, just the introduction of it wasn't really that surprising. But I gotta admit, I do like quite a lot of the figures. I am actually pleasantly surprised by the Prime RC, and I didn't think I would be. So because of that, I wanted to do a follow-up and do Wave 2 as well. Also, I do plan on doing a video on the Wreckers and the Velocitron line, but I'm gonna do that on a separate thing. I am gonna touch up on some of the Selects and some of the Buzzworthy Bumblebee figures. God, am I sweating. Also, I wanna make a point that a lot of these figures are not released out here. And it seems like a lot of the pre-orders are for October to December, so it's gonna be a while before I'm actually able to review these, so might as well do this. So anyways, let's go ahead and get started. I mean, I got it already, so... So essentially, it's this, but in green, and I gotta say, it's so garish and bright that it really takes over the original G2 color scheme. I mean, it's just super green, super obnoxious, and I kind of really like it, so I definitely want to get it. And I did see that there was a pre-order on Amazon, and I think it's available in this month, so maybe I should pick that up. Okay, so I do have the Combiner Wars Legends Clash Shockwave, which is essentially the same thing, except this one comes with the giant orange peel. And do you really think that I'm going to skip out on this one? Because I'm a huge Shockwave fan, I bought the MP Shockwave, despite the fact that it was a huge price, and everyone was saying, oh, don't buy it, just buy the third-party ones. I'm gonna get this. I need it! <clears throat> Anyways. So I do have drag strip and hopefully I can find Wild Rider. I've seen that's pretty difficult to get because some of the pre-orders are just closed. But I gotta say that Wild Rider is kind of looking like the weakest Stunicon so far. I mean, the backpack doesn't clean up enough, but it's mostly a great Decepticon, and we've seen that multiple times. So he just kind of blurs out with the rest of the crew. I love the alt mode. I think the robot mode does have some nice design details, and I think overall the aesthetic is fine, and you can clean up the backpack. You don't have to leave it as how the stock images have. But just overall, I'm not as thrilled about that as I am with Drag Strip or Dead End or Motormaster. <laughs> I mean, it's obvious that this was meant to be Minerva, but I gotta admit, I think this is the best version of Alita 1. I mean, she's always been repaints. You got the Starscream, you got the RC one, which a lot of people like the RC one, which is fine, but I don't like the RC mold, so I couldn't really get into it. So I'm thankful that there's this new version that's out. It is kind of weird that they decided to go for Alita 1 because, well, we just had multiple figures of her, could have gone with something else, but... I'm not gonna complain. I think she looks fine. I think she looks the best here, so why not? You know, when I heard about the Prime characters being this Generations of Five versions, I was really worried about Knockout, then I heard that it was a Jazz repaint, then I got really worried. Now looking at the figure, that is pure sex. That's it. Knockout's one of my favorite characters, that's pure sex. What more do you want? Juicy. Why, but every time I think of this wave, I often forget that Tarantulas is here. I don't know why, he's just forgetful in the wave, which is funny because throughout Kingdom, this is the figure that I wanted, and now we have it, and I'm just like, oh yeah, that. It's not that it's bad, it looks really good, and I'm excited to get it, hopefully, but yeah, just for some reason, it constantly slips my mind. No. 
So we had the gray and orange version, which I really do like, but I'm so happy that they went for the original G2 comic color scheme this time around because obviously you want something different. And I think it looks pretty good. The jet mode is fine. I heard there's some kibble underneath it, but I think how it transforms is actually pretty decent. And I like those little vampire wings in green. I thought that was pretty hilarious. And uh, yeah, I love the head sculpt especially. I think this is a nice one to just throw in from G2 that's kind of random, but people would like. <laughs> Why would I pay for that alt mode? Why would I pay for that alt mode? Okay, I kind of like it. I do like the shape of Blitzwing's robot mode. I get why some people don't like it, but I'm fine with it. I'm kind of on board. I like the Titans Returns one, but this one just seems more squared off, more cartoony, more in line with everything else going on. And I just personally prefer that aesthetic, so I, I think I'm gonna go for that. Also, he has red fists that I want to put on any figure I could find. <laughs> I got really worried when I heard about a Commander Class Motormaster, but I'm actually very thrilled about it. It is weird in the package how big the box is compared to the actual figure itself, but I'm not sure if they knew what they were going to pack it in. And I gotta admit that the parts forming of the trailer is kind of weird to me, but I get why that's a necessary thing. I also like the fact that you could just make Motormaster into Menasaur without using any of the components of the Deluxe class figures. I mean, I prefer having him complete because it just kind of feels weird, but I kind of like the fact that you could just have one figure be Motormaster and Menasaur at the same time. I think that the Motormaster robot mode looks fantastic. I really do like the base mode, especially when you put it next to the Laser Optimus Prime. So personally, I'm on board with this. I know some people don't like Transformers Cybertron, but that's the show I started off with and I actually recently rewatched it and I think it's completely fine. It's not the best show ever, but I think for what it's worth, it's not really that bad. And uh, seeing a Cybertron Metroplex figure that's going to be a Titan class figure, I, I'm on board with that. I know a lot of people aren't because it's not G1 Metroplex, but look at how many G1 Titans you've had already. Can we have something that's outside of G1? I mean, this year you also got a Black Xerox, so I don't think it's really that big of a deal. The alt mode is definitely weird, but the robot mode, ooh, it's so nice. I love the buzzsaw. Wish it came with the Minicon and the Cyberkey, but whatever. <laughs> I get that originally she was a headmaster and now they've taken that gimmick out, but I really don't care. I think she's perfectly fine without it and also I'm kind of tired of the headmaster gimmick to begin with so I don't feel like I necessarily need it, but I love this obscure headmaster character being brought into the US and international market. Just hope I'm able to find it because we don't have Walgreens out here, we have to rely on Eat Games and GameStop and uh, sometimes they're hit and miss, but I really want this. <laughs> Listen, I want to get this because I think the dark purple looks really good and hopefully this version doesn't yellow because mine... Ugh. Well, I don't have Earthrise Trailbreaker. So I guess. It's just COG but in red and I really want it. I don't know how I'm going to get it because Target exclusives they sell here in Toys R Us. Yes, we still have Toys R Us in Canada and it sucks because they overprice everything and most of the exclusives don't really sell. It sucks. So I have planned on getting the original Amazon Pterosaur and hopefully that will come soon but uh, this color scheme actually doesn't look too bad. I actually like the blue highlights so I wouldn't mind getting this version too but I don't feel like I need it. Oh boy! Dinobot looking like a hairless cat. Okay. Honestly, the only figure I don't really care about in this pack is Toy Scorpnock, and I still want it. I mean, you've got a black version of the Wasp in there, that's Sky Wasp, not Sky Warp. You have Ransack, and you have Goldbug. Yeah, I'm definitely on board with that. Come on, Toys R Us, give it to us. So, what is my impression of Wave 2? Honestly, I think it's better than Wave 1. Yes, we got a lot of bad guys, but I really do like that. And we got a lot of good molds, I gotta say. I mean, Tarantulas, the Alita 1 mold, I think looks pretty good. A lot of the big figures look cool. The only thing that really disappoints me is some of the buzzworthy Bumblebee figures, like the Pterosaur is just kind of the same thing, but I don't mind that. The heroic Maximal Dinobot looks terrible to me. That's probably the worst thing here, but still, I mean, a lot of the Decepticons and Predacons, they really have my interest. So what do you guys think? Please comment below. Let me know. Please like, comment, share, subscribe, and all those fun doodads. And I will see you guys next time.
with Legacy, I feel it's been pretty good to decent uh, with the certain figures I've gotten. With the future of Legacy, I'm hoping at the very least we have better, dis better distribution because by god, trying to get things from here in Australia is a pain. Hmm, what do I think of Legacy? Well, I think it's going to be pretty good. Um, everything that's come out in the first wave and I guess second wave stuff that's already here is pretty good. I love skids, I love the core classes, Skywarp and Iguanas, yeah, they're pretty great. Hello there, and this is Robotnik Ivan Wasim, a grumpy artist, and here are my thoughts on the legacy of our part. It's Sarah, Rosa Mediocre, Zarsian Prime being my biggest disappointments and the like. But other than that, the rest of the wave were mediocre or decent. Second and third wave are far less disappointing, and the only one of them being knockout. Overall, my hopes are high, but hey, at least many might get some of the things of the characters they like. Even if I'm not one of them, the rest of you try think with a clear head and don't be blind consumers. Excelsior! Transformers Legacy so far has been pretty good damn good. It's given us some really top-notch Stunticons, one of the best kickbacks in years, and love for G2, which nowadays is very few and far between. However, the whole line isn't made up entirely of bangers. Road Rocket's body type fits so poorly that the designers decided to turn him into a Kudoichi. Crankcase is apparently going to parts form the entire front of his car, and Motormaster being around $150 is hurting my prospects to finishing Menasaur. Starscream looks promising, and I'll probably get him since I'm a Starscream maniac, but since I live in Australia and we tend to skip waves a lot, I'm starting to think that I'll either have to import him from Singapore at a premium, or buy from the one place that regularly sucks Transformers, which is probably the bad idea because Jesus Christ. My thoughts on Legacy Wave 1. A uh, pretty good start to a line that I think could uh, go in interesting places. I would like to see more animated figures and prime figures out of this line if they're gonna go for the whole multiverse thing. So yeah, that's it. I'm not gonna claim Legacy Wave 1 has been all sunshine and rainbows, but it was surprisingly really good, especially after the somewhat subpar reveals. Bulkhead and Skits are probably my favorites from Wave 1, not including re-releases. That being said, Hasbro, sweetie, actually release your toys on the East Coast the same time as the rest of the states, you bastard! So it's been a little while with Legacy, I've gotten a couple more toys from them, and what I said originally when I only had Bulkhead and Blaster still stands. This toy line is a vast improvement over the original War for Cybertron trilogy. I expect that Wave 3, 4, Year 2, and all the waves in that one will be just as good as this. So, so far the current Legacy toy line isn't too bad, I mean these guys are pretty fun to mess with. However, unfortunately ones like this are just re-releases of toys from previous toy lines, such as Kingdom. I don't own a lot of uh, Legacy figures, but the ones that I do own, they're really goddamn good. The Legacy, uh, Bazaar, and Iguanas and Kickback, they're really good. I don't own none of the Wave 2 figures, but I'm excited for Elite 1 and Motormaster. And especially now with the next Wave, with, you know, Crankcase and all of those. So, I thought Legacy was just gonna be full of stinkers, like, uh, that thing, but... Not really. I think Transformers Legacy is going to be the toy line that everybody is going to love because of how many characters, specifically fan favorite characters, they're going to be reimagining. Hello, this is my little 20 second blurb about Legacy. It's great despite the minor flaws and major flaws. Wave 1 and 2 are amazing. Wave 2 is sensational. The figures look great. They're amazing. I can't wait to see what happens with what they do down the road with Beast Wars, Armada, etc. It's going to be great. So after Wave 1 of Legacy turned out to be so amazing, and now that Wave 2 has slowly been forming in my collection, it's got me really excited to look forward to what we've got in the future, especially the rumored return of Transformers anime. Core class is again a nice mix of Megatron standing out. The deluxes appear very interesting, with Knockout being the standout. The Voyagers in this wave are G-Axis and the Blue One. Leader class, being Blitzwing, is a questionable figure. The Commander class is Motormaster with the trailer. Metroplex looks amazing. So I've really been enjoying Transformers Legacy so far, and Wave 2 looks to be the best wave of the whole line. I'm super excited for Motormaster, Blitzwing, G-Axis. Every figure looks like a 10 out of 10, and I really can't wait to see what else they have 
for the future of Legacy. I know we have Wave 3 pictures now, but I want to see even more of what they have in store for us. Wave 1 started out strong with a mix of G1 and Prime characters. Wave 2 continued the trend by adding Beast Wars to the collection. Wave 3 is adding Headmasters and Master Force characters. I am so close to finishing my G1 and Beast Wars collections that the anticipation for new product announcements cannot come soon enough. Things could only get better. You know, like having the money to pay for everything. These are the only two legacy figures I have. Skywarp and Skids. They're probably the best figures I have in Transformers. I've got all of these Autobots up here and all of these Decepticons down here, but these two are my absolute favorite. Uh, Legacy's alright. The first wave was eh, but the second wave was when it got started getting really, really good. I really want to see what Legacy does in the future. What is up YouTube? Thanatos Prime. Impressions on Legacy. Loving it so far. Only gripe. Overuse of clear plastic. Especially with this thing. Terrified of this thing. Cannot wait for Menasaur. Cannot wait for Blitzwing. And overall, I'm loving this line. Peace. Legacy is essentially the uh, modern generations of all time, uh, with it being uh, mostly G1 and with a few sprinkles of uh, other universe characters like uh, Bulkhead, uh, RC, uh, and uh, G-Axis as well, like the G2 G-Axis. Uh, my main hope for Legacy, though, is that they do, like, uh, more stuff, like, like, you know, with, uh, uh, like, maybe some movie stuff, w like, g one fight movie stuff, uh, like, maybe a G1, uh, uh, a G1, maybe, like, a G1 blackout, that would be cool to see. When the images of Legacy's first wave were released, I was pretty excited for them, but I was still a little hesitant because of kind of just how janky everything looks, but now that I've got these guys in hand and what's coming out in the future, I can safely say that I'm pretty excited for the rest of the line. Okay, first impressions of Wave 2. Amazing, amazing, good, 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 and Minerva looks fantastic. And judging by what we've seen of Wave 3, and Wave 3 including these two boys, I think Legacy is definitely up there for being one of the best Transformers lines to date. So, uh... Legacy Wave 2 is a bit of a mixed bag in my opinion. The Core class is pretty good. The Deluxe class has a good range. I like them a lot. The Voyagers don't do it for me though. GX is no sound wave. Uh, Bloodswing is okay. Um, that's all I have to say about that. Um, Motormaster looks immaculate. I love how he looks, and I wasn't a Cybertruck fan, so I don't care about Metroplex at all. Yo, yo, yo! So here are my thoughts on Legacy Wave 2. I think it's a huge step up from Legacy Wave 1. Definitely way better than the first wave, in my opinion. The only downside is um, is that the repack of Core Class Optimus Prime. Why do they even repack him? I don't know. I don't know why. But the other figures are good. Other figures are really good. And they're fun. I love them. I love them all so much. Yes! All Spark TV. Now that's just prime.